Guys, let me share a really cool ripple with you. So as many of you know, I have this membership program called the Connect and Grow Coaching Program. It's a 12-month immersive experience. We do a lot of cool things inside that program, one of which are these sessions that we do called TED Ripple. And as you know, we generally have a monthly theme and we do a deep dive on that. One of the things that we always try to do with these uh, opportunities with the TED speaker is to find somebody that's in alignment with our message. And I had found uh, Brian Benson's TED Talk probably a few months back and I earmarked it because I knew that I wanted to use it for one of these. And what we do with this is we actually show the speaker's presentation and then for our community members, we actually have an opportunity to have a conversation and dialogue about it. But Brian's session, as I went through it, probably for the third time, just really stuck out to me. This guy is really inspiring on so many levels. I encourage you to check out gbrianbenson.com to see everything that he's into. But he, he did this film. He wrote this film called Guitar Man. And it was an answer to some challenging times for his character in this film to be able to utilize the power of guitar to connect. And it just was amazingly unique in how he approached it in the presentation that he gave at TED about it, right? But really all he is is a phenomenal individual that is creating so many positive ripples. So when I was inspired to reach out to him and just say, look, if your ears were burning today, this is why. He was so kind in his response back to me. I'm like, I need to get this guy on the podcast. I need to have him as a guest. And we had some great back and forth. We've talked about Stretch Armstrong. We've realized that we're both authors, both realize that we are also trying to make a difference in the world. But, you know, Brian's little quick 411 is he's a five-time author, actor, speaker, host, project co coaching consultant, podcaster, cancer survivor, four-time Ironman triathlete. Jeez, I don't know where he... <laughs> He gets the time, cross country bicyclist, and someone that believes in you. I love that. He frames that on his website. It's right there with his header image. And he talks about good vibes and big leaps. And I took a big leap to jump in and see if Brian wanted to ripple with us. And I'm so absolutely grateful that he agreed to do so. So I can't wait to dive into this episode and get an opportunity for you to meet Brian Benson. So let's go. Guys, I'm super excited to introduce you to Brian Benson. Brian, thanks for being with, uh, with us for the Ripple Effect podcast. How are you doing today? I'm great, Steve. Thank you for having me. Well, I, you know, as, as we were kind of talking offline, uh, you, you are uh, in Arizona right now and, you know, in one of the more creative spaces that you could possibly be in. Tell us a little bit about where, you, where, you're, uh, where you're at today. Well, I'm in the little tiny town of Clarkdale, Arizona, which is about 15, 20 miles west of Sedona. Um, and Sedona, you know, is if anybody who's been there knows that it's, it's there's just a lot of a lot of beautiful art, um, you know, some forward thinking people. I mean, I, Sedona is one of those places I think would be a national park if it wasn't a city. Yes, it, it's that pretty. Yeah, my wife and I went there a few years back. We actually did the pink Jeep tour, which I know is a big thing there. And it was I got so many great photos and it's just such a inspirational place. And obviously for a creative guy like yourself, that's kind of a perfect place to be. Yeah, no, it really is. It's nice to see the sunshine most every day. And that kind of helps lift one's spirits, you know, after I grew up in the Northwest, um, you know, so yeah, you know, and I was just telling somebody the other day and it's, you remember the cars, that cartoon, that Disney, uh -huh. it's like living in cars world here. I mean, it's just <laughs> magnificent. I love it. <laughs> well, so uh, I want, you know, I, I, there's so many questions I have for you because you and I uh, connected, as I mentioned uh, in your intro, uh, I had found your TED Talk and we featured it for our Connect and Grow Ripple membership. It's a coaching program that we do that where we have a theme each month and we feature a talk that, you know, we've we've discovered that really could uh, stimulate some great conversation and your, and your presentation was phenomenal, by the way. But yeah, that's I had to reach out to you when I found you because it was the third time I've actually watched the talk. And every time I pick something new up um, and out of your message, but 
I would love to know how that TED Talk came about and, and sort of what's that done for your career since you actually did, you know, you were on the TED stage. Yeah. Well, first of all, thank you for the kind words. That really that made my day. Wow. I mean, that's, I appreciate you enjoying well, of course. it. Well, and right. thanks for responding. I mean, I, I, I didn't expect for you to respond. And then for us to have this great dialogue back and forth, I mean, talk about the perfect ripple, right? So it was so fun. Yeah. Well, thank we you. We talked about well, Stretch Armstrong. We talked about... <laughs> <laughs> stretch Hulk. Yeah, I think there was a Stretch Hulk too. I don't know. But, you know, so that thing, that was an interesting experience for me. Um, I'll, I'll set it up briefly. Okay. Uh, I left my business in 09 and I kind of stepped out into the unknown and I accidentally wrote my first book and that kind of pointed me in a whole new direction. And I just kind of was stepping out of my comfort zone a lot. And one thing after another, and it just kind of opened up another door here and another door there. And, and I was presented opportunities at different times and they were scary because I hadn't had the, um, you know, road, the track experience of, of, of doing some of those things I said yes to, but the TEDx talk, a gentleman I briefly met when I was in Reno, Nevada, called me he was in la when i was in la and he said hey i'm curating an event i think you'd be a good speaker would you like to do it and i just gulped and said yes <laughs> and two months to get ready and so i just really worked my butt off that first month trying to write a really good talk and then the next that last month before i just practiced the crap out of it um you know standing in my little studio there or there was a hike that i really loved in Studio City that I would just, I would do it once on the way up and once on the way down. And I yeah. probably practiced it two or 300 times. Wow. And and then I just, you know, it's interesting because most of the time I would, I much prefer to just um, kind of channel my answers or what have you rather than regurgitate something. Yeah. So it's a little scary in that regard, yep. but it went okay. And um, <laughs> yeah. you know, it's just, it's, I don't know. It's one of those things where, uh, I'll get surprised every once in a while, like, you know, like a person uh, of yourself, you know, who, who connected with it. And, and it just, it's really a nice feeling. I, I love, I, I mean, I, I love how it, it, and you and I have very similar uh, perspectives in terms of how we prepare for talks. I, I, I don't like the prescriptive aspects. I, you know, I'm, I'm kind of a, Hey, what comes to me in that moment based on the audience? And, and I know for a Ted talk, that's, that's hard, right? You know, and, and you've seen some that probably haven't gone so well because people do that. So the fact that you put that much time in preparation, I can tell you, you killed it. I mean, you absolutely yeah. killed it. So, uh, I, I, but, it, but the, the story behind the inspiration, you know, like the film, and I want to, I want to dive into that for a second, you know, but the thing that, that you really left me on is the piece of that self-discovery, right? What you've kind of, you know, what your path has led you down and, what kind of stimulated that, you know, and, and sort of ultimately, and we'll talk about the film uh, Guitar Man here in just a second, but I mean, I, I got to imagine that this was kind of a metamorphosis in some capacity, right? Yeah. You know, like I said, one thing led to another, the intuitive breadcrumbs just kind of kept leading me on. And, and I left my family business because I felt like I wasn't really growing there anymore. And I think, as I said in the TED Talk, I felt like I had this gift inside of me that needed to come out, although I had no idea what it was, honestly. And after my dad, I told my dad he was cool with it. He said, we decided to sell. It took a year to to sell it because we had to go through the process, et cetera. And that last year was tough. And so I just sat down one day and wrote down five things that I knew that would help keep me in balance. And they really did. And then my intuition started saying, expand the list and write a book. And I was. And... <laughs> It just kind of poured through me the last couple months of being there. And then I just found an editor, found a layout person and just went for it and self published it. And, you know, I didn't sell a whole lot of copies because I didn't really know how to market a book and I was shy and afraid of public speaking at the time. And yeah. so I just, but it won a couple of awards and it's so just like, hmm. And so I just went for it, you know, uh, when I, I moved to Reno, my son was living in Lake Tahoe nearby. And so I moved there for four years as he was entering high school and just reinvented myself. Yeah. Ted, you know, I did Toastmasters. I did some community college speech courses. I hired someone to co-host an internet radio show with me. I made an interactive workshop thinking I was going to be clever because I wouldn't have to talk the whole time, but it worked better <laughs> that way. I found out. And I took an acting class and just all these things I felt would help me. I mean, I had to work really hard to be comfortable in front of people. And I still do kind of, because I'm an introvert. I'm an outgoing yep, me introvert. Too. 
Um, so, but the movie, I had this, after the acting class finished, I had this dream come to me about this street guitar story. And when I woke up, I go, I have to write this down. And so I did. Met a young filmmaker randomly and said, I don't really know how to act. <laughs> I've never made a short film. You want to do this with me? I have a good idea. Okay. So we made Guitar Man on the streets of Reno. And it just, um, I felt so alive. And it did well at film festivals. Somebody saw it, gave me the lead in their short. And then I just, I moved to LA after my son graduated from high school. And I just kept nibbling. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, so give us the premise of Guitar Man, because I want our yeah. audience to know about it. And then, of course, where, where people can actually watch the full film. Thanks. Um, it's on my website, gbrianbenson.com. And it's also on YouTube. If you just type my name in and Guitar Man, it'll come up. You know, basically, it's just kind of, uh, it's about a street guitarist who who's kind of scraping by, you know, getting changed here and there. And he, he's got this there's this guitar in a pawn shop that he really wants to get. That's it's an old 1930s resonator. And it actually was mine. And the pawn shop guy said they'd put it in the, in the shelf overnight for me in the window. So I, I hope they awesome. give it back. You know, I know. Right. And so, um, and you know, at the culminates in like, and throughout this short film, it's only eight minutes. There's like these little messages I felt kind of were important to kind of include about some of the people I, also met on the street about maybe some of the reasons why people donated money, et cetera, et cetera. It was supposed to be kind of funny yet heartfelt. Yeah. And so ultimately um, toward the end, you know, so he's saving up his money to buy this old guitar. At the end, he walks by through this, this um, alley and he sees a guy struggling and he just kind of gives him what money he has that he made that evening, you know, cause they're both struggling, but this yeah. guy was struggling even worse. And so then at the very end, it just kind of flashes forward to like, I got the guitar, I'm playing it, you know? And so it was a happy ending. I mean, it's kind of like pay it forward, you know, just try to be a good person, do good stuff and, and help others when you can. And, and I, I feel will be rewarded. Well, you know, knowing that you're introverted and uh, I've got to ask was the inspiration behind, and obviously you're a gifted guitarist, which I want to talk about too, but you know, at the, at the end of the day, was the guitar the way to connect with people as opposed to having to have the conversation connect through music, using that as a tool and a resource? Interesting. You know, I, I, that's a very interesting question. I've never even thought about it like that. For me, it was just, I got this idea and this dream. I like to dabble and self-taught, you know, in the old Delta blues style. And it just, I don't know. I just sat down and just kind of started writing this. It's almost like a documentary because, yeah, you know, and, yeah. and I just kind of started writing down these, these, um, over, I don't know what we call them, um, overdubs or something, you know, like where there's action going on and I'm, mm -hmm. I'm speaking like, and I don't know. So I don't know that. I don't think it, I think it's a lot simpler than that. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. It, something you know, like when something's inspired and you feel empowered to do something, it just comes together and, I didn't really overthink it. Yeah. Well, what, what do you think was the stimulus behind the idea? Well, that's, that's a whole nother conversation, but I think <laughs> this, I, you, I feel like I'm, I'm on my mission. You know what I mean? My life's mission. And after when I was three, I told my mom, I was put here to inspire others. And she reminded me after my book came out, which was both a blessing and a curse. But it's like, okay, I have a mission. All right, I'm going to go full bore. But yet, you know, I was going too full bore. And lost parts of me and became over serious and tried to be perfect. And, and, and just that messed me up for a while too. So, um, but getting back to your question, I think, I don't know when we're on our, when, when we're doing what we're supposed to be doing and we really feel like we're in alignment and we're, we're making the effort stuff comes into our lives to kind of help us push it along. And I think that idea I got was just part of my whole growth process and another way for me to share with people, because I honestly, I was, I just written my first book really not too long before that. And so that was kind of the only way I thought I could do it. It's like, whoa, short films. Hmm. You know? And so it just yeah. opened my world up in a whole nother way. Yeah. Well, it, 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 uh, there's a, there's a real definitive message behind it. And that's, that's what I really like. And to know that you're kind of introverted in, in, you know, as, as a, at your core, I'm very much the same way. I'm like, uh, 
introverted and shy. It would be like a, uh, a competition to see who's probably more. It would be definitely me, but at the end of the day, I, I, you, you, you hit on something that's really powerful. I think for people to know is that, you know, one of the ways that introverts really accelerate that, you know, that uncomfortableness or get through it really is when they connect with other people and whether it's, you know, through, uh, you know, interactions, having these conversations, using a tool like a guitar or, or a short film uh, or a book, right. To open up that opportunity. And for, at least for me, I know with my book, it has been an avenue for me to say, you know, I, or realize that I really, there's a lot more of us out there than I thought that there was. Right. And, and even though you, you look at somebody up on stage, you know, like you think you're a rock star, you know, because you're on a Ted stage and, and you come off and it's like, ah, this is, you know, I'm this good is just, I can do to hold it together. Up yeah, there. yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm the same exact way. It's like every single time people are like, oh, you know, you did a great job. I'm like, really? I mean, <laughs> are you sure? But it's, well, it's, it's, it's funny because introverted people really have some of the best gifts to offer. And when they can find that gear, yeah. it, it, there's, that's where the magic is. You are so correct. And, and it's, not always been easy for me to find that gear or I will witness other people doing kind of maybe things in the same realm and they're not as introverted and they're more outgoing and they're not afraid to market and they're, you know what I mean? They're like almost over the top and it's just like, fudge, I feel like I need to be like them. And then, then, then it's sucks and it's not easy and you feel like you're not moving forward and right. You yeah, know, so totally. you're absolutely right. It's just a matter of, finding those avenues to share that fit who we are. Well, and the neat thing about you, the more I've learned about your work, I mean, you have the books, you've got your podcast, you've got these creative outlets that you've explored. I mean, you've been an actor and, and, you know, you've now a filmmaker. Um, there's all these things that have allowed you to kind of push yourself. And, you know, the way I look at it, kind of being the outsider without actually asking you straight up, um, you know, these were all things that you went down these sort of alleys to test, right? And to kind of see what came of it, which is really impressive because a lot of introverts just, they, you know, they're afraid of their own shadow. They won't come out of their shell. <laughs> so sometimes, you're an inspiration to me in that regard. I told you, man, lights are all okay. So there's times yeah. when I'm afraid to come out. No. Yeah, you know, thank you. I just, for me, it was just like an opportunity would be presented or an idea would come to me kind of inspirationally. And I just felt like all systems go, I'm supposed yep. to do this next. I mean, there's other things, you know, and, and, and so I think all the things that really worked for me were the things that felt really that way. And when I didn't push, you know, the times when I've tried to push or try to do it like somebody else or whatever, those are the times when my real energy is not behind it or yeah. it's just it's hard to move that huge rock uphill when we're not supposed to be moving it absolutely that, yeah that run into it many times you know yep i can relate totally <laughs> i can well, well, let me ask you so you know how did the guitar come into your life i think in high school I just, I bought a used electric and I just dabbled and, um, I'm kind of stubborn and I, I, I ha also have a really good ear. And so I was able to kind of teach myself enough, but yet almost be too stubborn to like take lessons because I felt like, and so it just, I, uh, it's so, it's so silly. Um, cause I could be a lot better than I am. <laughs> had I, had I, <laughs> you know, and I really haven't played very much since I made the movie. Um, I just, I, I do so many different things and um, that's another kind of regret. I wish I'd practiced a little more and maybe take some lessons and open myself up to that. But well, there's still thanks. time. You're pretty young. So, I mean, I <laughs> yeah, yes. I have the yes, same theory. You know, my, my brother was a really gifted guitarist and that's, that was kind of, what I always sort of aspired to be. And I, I really wasn't, but I've had guitars around me my entire life and oh, wow. I, I love them. I couldn't tell you much about like the different kinds. I just know what I like and what I, you know, what resonates with me. Couldn't play a song that you would recognize to save my life. But at the end of the day, it becomes, you know, for me, it's, it's a de-stressor. I, I end up picking my guitar up about three or four times a week and, and I can, I can get lost in just trying to get better. It's meditative. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and that's all that it is for you and that's okay you know it's, it's just i think sometimes we can 
and I, you know, I do this to myself, we can put a lot of pressure on ourselves, like, oh, I should be further along or, you know what I mean? Yeah. But I should be, but yet I don't need to apply that pressure to myself. Yeah, absolutely. Well, uh, let advice. me, let, let me ask you, who, who are, um, who are your, who are your big influences that, I mean, you probably had some bits of inspiration to go down these different paths. I'm curious if you've got a few just off the top of your, your, your head that, uh, really kind of, uh, inspired you to want to explore all these different avenues. That is a great question. I don't know. I've always been really curious and kind of independent. And um, if I just get an idea about something I want to do, I do it. You know, for example, I found this magazine in the 70s when I was young that had a bunch of addresses of old boy baseball players from the 20s and 30s and 40s. And I started writing them. And they started writing back. And it was almost like potentially Christmas every day at my mailbox. And I would get autographed three by five index cards. And I mean, I wrote to... I mean, you name it, Hank Aaron. I mean, guys from the 30s, the old Brooklyn Dodgers, some of the Negro League players like Satchel Paige and Cool Papa Bell, and even Jack Dempsey, the boxer, his address is on there. No and, kidding. Yeah. And so it was just, I've always just kind of like, if I get a wild hair about something and I feel like I'm supposed to do it, I just do it. So I don't know about any specific people. I just would see something somebody would do or some idea here. It's like, ding, you know what I mean? So... When I moved to Reno, there was a gentleman who taught the community college speech course named Joe Giampapa, and he's probably in his early 80s now, and he is a lovely man, and he had written some books, and he was just very positive, and he really gave me a lot of positive uh, inspiration and affirmations while I was there, and he also was the one who taught the acting class, too, so, oh, wow. you know, yeah, just people along the way, bits and pieces here and there, you know, you see something that's cool, it's like, well, you did not know this before you uh, you just shared that, but I mean, you and I actually have that in our you know similarities in our background. I did the same thing. I actually asked oh, Olivia yeah. Newton John to marry me at the age of seven. I have no <laughs> idea how I was able to get a stamp on an envelope and get it out, and somehow got to her with an autographed picture. And she said, "Call me when you turn twenty-one." <laughs> <laughs> I, I did the same thing for Joe Montana. I did, you know, s same kind of thing. Anybody that was inspiring, I, you know, s I, I think I know what publication you're talking about that would give you that, that sort of like insider was, baseball to, to figure out some of those heroes, but it was yeah. amazing how people would actually respond. Well, that was before it was a business too, I think. Yeah. And yeah. Now it's a lot harder. I think it was called sports collectors digest. Yes. Yes. Wow. That was it. Yeah. Yep. yep. I had, I had that. And then I also used, there was like a, I don't remember my, my parents signed me up for it in elementary school, but it was kind of like a, it wasn't teen beat, but it was like one of those. And then you could, they had on the back on the reference, I figured out in, you know, sort of all the credits, they had like the agents that got these, you know, stars into this publication and their, their addresses were there. And I figured what the heck you write there. And maybe they, you know, and I ended up getting autographs from a few people back and it was pretty, like you said, it was like Christmas. Like you would write yeah. it, kind of forget about it. And then all of a sudden this thing would pop up and, you know, my mom would be like, how the heck did you, you know, how do you know this person? Why did you, how did you write that? But I, I did the same thing because I always was really intrigued with their journey and sort of their approach. And so I always had like a question that I put into this little, you know, probably almost illegible Ill, uh, uh, writing yeah. that I had at the time, but, you know, and they would respond back and it was just so amazing. And uh, I, I don't know, you know, we, it, it's just kind of funny. We have that in common. It was a blast. I even kept track of how many days it took for them to respond. Oh, <laughs> Don Newcomb was the quickest in like one week and Hank Aaron was like a year. Really? But, yeah. But it was, I don't know. I was just a little nerd. Did you hold on to those? I mean, hopefully you oh, did. Yeah. I got all of them, and in uh, probably about 15, 20 years ago, uh, you can reach out to the Hall of Fame and order really awesome eight by tens. And so I framed a whole bunch of them, oh. and they're all in a storage unit up in Oregon right now. But I um, love that. It's oh. so much fun. That is really cool. Well, tell us a little bit about the books that you've written. You know, you've got is it six books now? Yes. All right. T tell us a little bit about them. Well, the first one, the balance book, it's called Brian's List, 26 and a half easy to use ideas on how to live a fun, balanced, healthy, healthy life. Just, yeah, and it was just, it's a, it's a, it's a fun, simple book. Um, I just talked about a whole bunch of different ways to stay in balance. And I have incorporated a, a kind of a fun, silly drawing of myself 
doing each thing. And so, you know, it's just a nice little reminder book. And uh, it was kind of interesting too, though, at the, at the beginning, it, I don't think it was an accident. It's been really nice to um, learn early on what keeps me in balance and what throws me out of balance. So yeah. that's, that's helped me on my journey. Um, Can you give us a tip of what keeps you in balance? Oh, gosh. Um, well, these are all pretty basic, but like, you know, eating healthy, um, movement every day, a little bit of exercise, um, you know, some quiet time. You know, and it can it can come from playing the guitar or reading yeah. or meditating. Um, yeah, those, yeah. I mean, then there's some other ones like clean clean house. I mean, it just <laughs> it removes this energetic weight of upon ourselves or declutter. You know, same thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I I relate totally relate to those. <laughs> yeah, and then I wrote one when I was in. Um, just right when I got to LA called finding your voice. And that just was a whole bunch of different blogs that I had written and some spoken word pieces that I wrote and a few other quotes and things. And so it's, it's, it's there. And then, um, I decided to do a couple of kids books. Um, I'd written a whole bunch I of kids. Stories. Thanks. And, um, to make a long story short, when I was in Reno, I met this kid who worked for this company that made moving picture apps for children's stories. And, they bought five of my stories and then they ended up running out of money. And so it just kind of sat and I asked them to be released out of my contract. They did. And then I decided to take the bull by the horns and, and did uh, Stevie alien. And then another one called Lucy and Chester's amazing adventures. And i uh, really proud of how those turned out. And then um, I did habits for success, inspired ideas to help you soar. And then earlier this year, a uh, friend of mine and I um, put together a multi-author book and we helped people write their individual stories and it's called Dare to Dream. I love it. Yeah. And all of these have links on your website. So we'll make sure to include that in the show notes and they're all available on Amazon, right? Yep. Fan yeah. What was, what was the, if you had to like boil it down to maybe two or three lessons that you learned in the writing process, what would those be for someone who's, you know, maybe not written a book, thought about writing a book, but you know they know they've got something to say and share with the world yeah don't feel like you have to go from a to z just if you get an idea or a thought uh, well, just write it down um, a lot of times like when i'm in the car i'll get an idea and i'll voice it to myself and i'll email it to myself and i'll just copy and paste it onto a doc you know just collect you know collect all those things and if you have an idea for a book or a memoir or something you've got all this stuff and, and it'll, it'll show itself. It'll show how it's supposed to come together, you know, or, and it might, or you might need a little bit of help to do that, but just don't feel like you got to go from A to Z. That's way too much pressure. And sure. that just leads to writer's block and all kinds of stuff like that. Um, I'm one that doesn't write all the time. I only kind of write when I feel inspired to. Yeah. So, you know, learn that about yourself and, and don't put pressure on yourself if that's, the way that you kind of need to do it. Um, you yeah, know, those are, those are great tips. I mean, they're ep excellent tips. Um, you know, and, and clearly it works for you, right? I mean, obviously, I mean, to get this many books out and, um, you know, over how, how many years have you been publishing? The first one came out in 09. Okay. So, I mean, that's, I, I mean, you've made a great career out of that. So do you find that the books are opening doors and opportunities for you to, to have more speaking opportunities and, you know, some of the, you know, different you know, appearances that you get an opportunity to have. Yeah, absolutely. You know, the books and just the combination of maybe the TEDx and some of the other crazy things I've done yeah. just kind of, I don't know, make me seem interesting. <laughs> you know, it, that remains to be seen, but you know, it, just, it doesn't hurt for sure. sure. And obviously when we're in that period of maybe doing a book launch or whatever, you know, you try to reach out and try to get a little more awareness to, to get it going. But uh, yeah, you know, and the speaking and stuff, I've yeah, for sure, especially you know, podcasts and stuff. And yeah. I've probably been in a, a little bit of a transition the last couple of years. Um, I'm fine now, but I had prostate cancer three years ago. Oh, no. And yeah, but it was a blessing in disguise. It, it kind of gave me permission to be off the hamster wheel a little bit and relax and take stock of things. And um and uh, it's, it's, I ended up driving around the US for six months in a used RV I picked up about a really? year after that happened. Yeah. And it was really nice because, like I mentioned earlier, where I kind of had put a lot of pressure on myself since I was writing self help books and I needed yeah. to be 
whatever. And it, it allowed me to be anonymous and just kind of like get back to who I really am, the silly, goofy guy, and just, just lead with that and just be me rather than feel like I need to ha- look a certain way. Sure, sure. And so, um, you know, I left LA last year, late last year, which was um, good. I'll st- I still go back to work, but there occasionally, but I needed to kind of refill my cup. And so, um, yeah, everything's great. I'm, I'm actually working on a road trip memoir from that RV trip. And so that's been kind of fun. And I feel like I'm writing in a more vulnerable um, depth than I have before. That's great. Well, when you go back to LA, uh, is that for acting? Or are you working on film projects behind the scenes or generally what does that consist of? It's potentially a little acting things. I've got a lot of creative friends there that I want to do stuff with and I need a little help with to make some of my other videos and stuff. And I have some more short film ideas. So yeah, a little bit of everything. That's great. Well, and yeah. it's, it's a perfect outlet. And especially if you've got established contacts, that, that certainly helps uh, accelerate the progress, right? Yes. Yeah. Well, if, if somebody, so I'm, you know, I, I, I am so fascinated with everything that you've been doing with your career and, and, you know, I'm glad to see that you've been able to overcome the health difficulties and, and, and turn that experience into, you know, something significant and meaningful, meaningful. I can't wait to read, uh, you know, the book on, um, your, uh, your road trip adventures, but nice. if you, if you had to share, uh, maybe a, a piece of advice that you've picked up or, or learned through everything that you've kind of gone through, what yeah. would that be for someone that's kind of like, Hey, you know, I'm, I'm inspired by, you know, Brian and what he's doing and, you know, what's that advice you would give them? Well, I think the toughest thing, I mean, just from me kind of paying attention to my own life and being in the observer's role and also kind of witnessing others, I think the heart, one of the hardest things for us humans to do is to learn how to really love and accept ourselves. And I've had to do a lot of work on that myself. And so whatever you can do in that regard, do it. it is, it'll be the most rewarding thing you can ever do. Because I think once we really get to a, that place of self-acceptance, everything else starts to fall into place because there's so many different ways that we look outside of ourselves for validation that just slow us down or hold us back or waste our time or, yeah. or feed us incorrect stories. And so definitely that, um, you know, and I think what, this is one of the ones that I said in the TEDx talk, but you know, there are no, there are no rules. Yeah. Yeah. You know, just happily expect the unexpected. And when I was really zipping along there early on, I was just like, what's next? What's next? What's next? You know? <laughs> I, lo- I love the no rules uh, approach that you did on your talk about the fact that, you know, you, you, we can have these preconceived notions, but that often limits us, right? You know, if you're open to everything and you just say, hey, look, you know, just because I didn't go down the prescriptive path that everybody says I need to doesn't mean that. I can't do these things. I mean, proof positive, right? You've got an award-winning short film. You, you, you have people that have paid attention to what your message is. That's, ex- that's expanded uh, your reach with other work. And I think that's, that's incredible. I, I, I love that. I, you know, w- where do you think that drive comes from, 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 you know, your, yourself, right? Is that, is that something you had to discover? Has it always been there? Or? I think it's always kind of been there um, in some ways. I mean, you know, I got into triathlons a long time ago after a knee injury and oh, like way back in 1987 when it was still pretty new. And I ended up doing 50 races, including four Ironman. It just like kind of became a lifestyle. But I don't know if I just get an idea, I'm supposed to do something and kind of dive into it. Looking back, I mean, I'm really proud of everything that I've been a conduit for. Uh But I think a lot of the stuff that I was doing for a little while there in LA was a way to also validate myself. Yeah. And, and so, you know, I still want to keep doing things, but yet from a more grounded whole place. Well, you know, the, the thing that I noticed about you, like, you know, I'm glad you mentioned uh, that being a triathlete, um, you don't do Four. small, <laughs> for, okay. Former, but you don't do small things. You do big things like, <sighs> I don't know where the drive comes from. Like, you know, I think it's just, I'm just, I'm very, I'm lucky that I'm pretty self-motivated. Yeah. Um, you know, and that's good and bad. I mean, it can also, like I said, you know, I, for a while there kind of, 
I was going so hard and like, what's next? What's next? And I wasn't really enjoying the ride like I yeah. should have. And that's another tenet, you know, of, of life, you know, have fun and enjoy the experience, yep. um, you know. Yeah, some, sometimes people are too consumed with the destination or, you know, the, the journey that they don't stop and look around to really recognize the progress they're making or the opportunities yeah. they're creating for themselves or some of the successes along the way. Yeah, pat your, you know, pat the back, right? And uh, you, I mean, you you touched on it, right? That's that's kind of how we're cultured. And I do think, uh, I think you're, um, you know, you probably can appreciate this, but you reach a certain age and you kind of get that wisdom of like, you know, I don't really care what anybody thinks about me. I well, wanna... Sure, I've only got another 20 years left. What the hell? <laughs> I don't think so. I think you should. I think you got another, you know, 30 to 50. I mean, <laughs> old like me, however, I, I would say, uh, but you, know, you do, you get that perspective, right? I mean, it's at the end of the day, you just kind of finally start to say, you know, I really don't care uh, what everybody else thinks I should be doing. And I'm ready to do what I think I should be doing. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and, and, and not sacrifice some of the things that might also bring one joy, whether it's a relationship or something else, you know, I was kind of pretty focused and I dated a little bit. I just felt like oh, I can't let anybody in because it's going to take me away from where I'm supposed to go. And yeah, yeah. If yeah. you meet the right person, it's it's a it's a benefit. That's good. Yeah, I love that. So um, I know your podcast is called The Creative Spark. Can yeah, give us a little sense of what the show's about, obviously, and in in the title. I'm curious. I like I said earlier, I'm really curious. I love to chat with people and pick their brains, and so I just. Thought I'd come up with this thing called the Creative Spark, where I interview all kinds of different, unique, creative people in all kinds of different realms. They they could be a writer, a painter, an actor. Um, I, I actually even had an ESPN sports anchor on. And I, that saw, was, I saw that. Yeah, he was such a nice guy, and there's he's so busy just to give me his time, and it was fascinating though, you know, because there's there's creativity in everything, and and even if you don't feel like you're creative, you know we're it's we got to explore that that parts of ourselves within ourselves because it just opens up so many other things but i don't know i've just had a blast um chatting with all these different unique cool people and just kind of picking their brain and, and yeah just, yeah i mean it's the beautiful thing about a podcast is you get to learn so much about people that have been there and done things that you're envious of or 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 inspired by and you, yeah. you can hear some of the insider, you know, you know, tricks and, and strategies that they've used or how they overcome their own self-doubt. Yeah. You think some of these people are rock stars and, and then to hear, well, they got the same common, you know, uh, concerns that you do about where you want to go with your life or career. Yeah, there is no overnight success. It's it's like usually 10 years, you know, if that, you know, yeah. it's just, yeah, everybody's everybody's fighting a battle that we don't. Absolutely. Me too. Well, and it's, and it's even harder, I think, for you know, today because when we default to social networks and we look at everybody who puts only the best things out there, right? You know, we, I, like, I like being inspired by the mess, the, the stuff nobody talks about. Everybody wants to put the, you know, the best you know, dressing on, the, uh, on the, uh, um, the salad, but at the end of the day, it's like, you know, how'd you get there? What'd you do? What'd you grind out to be able to you know, come up with these things? And that's the beauty. No, I agree, and I'm... I'm... There was a time when I wasn't, I was a little afraid to do that. And I'm, I'm getting more and more bold and, and, and it's just vulnerability is so important. And ultimately I think, and I know you're doing it for, for everybody that, that is in contact with you, but I mean, it's just about sharing and, you know, we're all going through the same stuff, but it's just like enabling other people to give them permission to do the same thing. And just yeah. like, okay, I'm not a freak. Okay. You know, I, <laughs> You know, I'm not the only one scared or yeah. or what have you. I mean, gosh darn it, we all are. Absolutely, without question. Well, if you don't mind, I've, so I, I, you know, I've asked some questions, but I have some specific what I call ripple connection questions that are kind okay. of, you know, fun to ask, fun to answer, but even give our audience a little bit of more insight as to who you are. But if you had to answer, and this is a big question, but what's the most important thing in your opinion in life? What's the most important thing in life? It's love and connection, you know, um, for ourselves, others, you know, and I think as I get older, you know, you just like we were talking about earlier, you just these things become more uh, 
just honed and focused like yeah duh. i mean heck i didn't know this before but just just being a good person doing good work trying your best and then just being okay with that and and just sharing yeah that's great i love that answer so you've gotten an opportunity to speak and get exposure to all these different avenues what would be the best thing someone who's worked with you, like a colleague or a client or someone that's seen you uh, present like TED Talk or another presentation somewhere for an event, what would be the best thing they could say about you? You'd have to ask them. I don't know. I think... <laughs> or what would be the best thing for you to hear them say that you would oh, hope that? It... People sometimes will reach out and say, you know, I just, I appreciate what you've done or what you're doing or, or about a specific thing, just because I feel like I'm real and I try to be, you know, I try to be as authentic as possible. And um, I think that just hopefully inspires other people to be the same, just like we talked about a little bit ago. I almost kind of feel like I was put here just to be a bridge uh, of sharing my own experiences, the tough stuff and the, the good stuff, just to kind of help people maybe tap a little bit more into inside of who they are what you know what i mean just the the spiritual nature i mean i'm not religious but yet yeah, just you know just just i'm a grounded person i've gone through it all i'm an everyday guy just you know if i can do it you can and there's benefits to looking within oh, i love that where do you find your courage <sighs> sometimes i can't find it i gotta look really hard sometimes <laughs> it's like buried in the closet under all the bowling ball and everything but under no, that I'm, old pair of shoes yeah I, yeah I, i'm with you i understand <laughs> I think it's just, just this knowing this inner feeling that like, this is what I'm supposed to do, even though it's not always easy and it's scary. It yeah. just, it even though I'll have my days where it's like, all I want to do is watch a baseball game or showtime. And then, you know, but yet I just, you know, you need downtime too. Sure. Sure. Especially if you're a go-getter, yeah. but uh, you know, just, yeah. Well, with all that you have going on, uh, obviously you are a phenomenal entrepreneur, but if you weren't doing what you're doing now, what would you be doing? I, that, I honestly don't know. I mean, our family business was a golf center and it was a blast and we had a driving range and a retail store and a nine hole par three course, but it wasn't what I was really supposed to be doing. Although it gave me a lot of great lessons and it taught me how to deal with the public yeah, and, and such. But um, I don't know. I'll revert back to my like third grade, you know, what do you want to do? And I, I wanted to be a Portland trailblazer. So oh, really? <laughs> to stack on it, give me another foot and uh, hi. And, you know, <laughs> that's uh, awesome. I know. <laughs> well, and you mentioned baseball. Who's your favorite baseball team? Um, yeah. You know, I like the California or the California angels. That's what they used to be called. I like yeah, that. It is. what. Yeah. Well, we used to go watch the California angels in Palm Springs during spring training. Um, during my spring breaks in high school. And I have pictures with like a 10 year old with Nolan Ryan and stuff. And it was so awesome. You'd get broken bats, but I like them. And I like the Braves because I started watching them on TBS in the eighties. Yep. We didn't have a local team. I didn't like the Mariners um, <laughs> in from Oregon. So the angels and the Braves. Oh, that's awesome. Well, you and I have a similar story there too. My, my parents were one of the few uh, families that had cable and we had WGN and TBS, right? So I, I became a Cubs fan by default, but you know, oh, yeah. yeah. So we finally won a World Series. It'll be another hundred years before we win another one. But all right. <laughs> you know, the Red Sox and the Cubs kind of broke it around the same time. They did, yeah, yeah, yeah. It uh, um, that I probably the happiest day of my life, other than getting married and my two kids. But. <laughs> awesome. Well, let me ask you, like right now, where do you, are you a um? you get inspiration from different, you know, sources, obviously, but what are you reading or, you know, podcasts you're listening to anything that you might share with our audience that really has helped kind of guide some of these inspirational ideas and thoughts for you? Gosh, any favorites, uh, books or movies, documentaries, or, or, you know, podcasts? There's, there's a book and I'm not going to probably say the title correctly. It's, I think it's anything you want by Derek Sivers, S I V E R S. He, he's the guy that, created that company cd baby oh yeah okay yeah. i've read it and i've listened to it it's great it's just really an easy read or listen and he's 
just, I don't know, I just got a lot from it, you know, the entrepreneurial aspect of it. And it just, it was really cool. I like to read a lot of bios. Yeah. Uh, those kind of inspire me too. Any uh, favorite bios that really stand out that you go back and read again? There's one on Jack Dempsey, actually. Um, and I can't remember the name. I think it had the word flame in it, but it okay. was awesome. Uh, just his had a, he had a fascinating story. I mean, he, he hoboed around on train tracks and would just bar fight and stuff in yeah. the 20s and late teens and, and just slowly worked his way up. I mean, it's just a crazy life. You know, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Oh, I'm going to check that book out. I, I, would, I, uh, I think I'll look, I'll look it up and I'll send it to you. Yeah. Okay, that'd be great. Yeah, we'll put it in the show notes for sure. Um, well, um, last two questions. What does the ripple effect mean to you? Ooh, just connecting with others, you know, just like you're doing and you're sharing and teaching and just, just connecting with other like-minded, positive people that want to um, be the best version of themselves. I love that. Well, and my final question, and, and you know, I, I ask this of everybody, but you know, I, I really, really always mean it. You know, what ripple can I be looking to create for you? Oh gosh, you already have. I mean, just the kind of things you said, and the fact that you really, you know, found some um, some worth in my TEDx talk that really meant a lot. Yeah, well, I'm I'm definitely going to get all your books. I I can't wait to read them and dive into them. You know, you are. You really have uh, touched my heart. You've been an inspiration, even though in the short period of time we've been interacting and in, in trying to set up this podcast. And I got to say, I told all of our Ripple members that I was going to be interviewing you and everybody's just clamoring for when this comes out. So, I mean, you have inspired beyond me, all the people that are part of my community because your your talk was powerful. But I think the more that we shared about you and your background and all that you've 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 explored, I mean, you are really, truly an inspiration. I'm so grateful to know you. And, and uh, like I said before we started recording, uh, you're stuck with me. So uh, we're going to become friends. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love that. And I would love to keep in touch. And man, you know, you're making me emotional here. Thank you for the kind words, brother. Absolutely. Well, I'm so great to, uh, it was so great to meet you. I'm, I'm so grateful that you agreed to be on the podcast and I, I look forward to, you know, a follow-up conversation very soon. I'd like that. Excellent. Well, guys, uh, we'll be back with another episode of the Ripple Effect podcast. Uh, but until then, Brian, ripple on. You too, Steve. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>